Hey everyone, we all know that feel playing against some of the obnoxious high mobility melee champions in mid like Yasuo, Fizz, or Akali. But there are some tricks that can help you deal with them and it doesn't require any crazy mechanics. So today, that's what I'm going to break down for you using a game where I'm smurfing in gold, playing Elise vs Yasuo. I'm using a smurf to show you how well these concepts work in the lower ranks and how easily you can abuse them. Also, these concepts will apply to any matchup or champion, not just Elise and Yasuo. Alright, so let's just jump right in as minions are about to touch. I'm already doing the first trick here, which is looking for harass on the melee before the waves meet, and this doesn't just apply to level 1. Basically, if the ranged minions aren't here yet, you can hit the melee champion without worry, but as soon as the ranged ones can hit you, you have to back off. We will see another example of this in a bit, but I was trying to auto him to pop his passive shield. After that, I'm auto attacking one minion down, which brings us to trick number 2, which is probably the most important one, and that's slow pushing. Slow pushing can single handedly make you win these matchups. To slow push, you have to have the push advantage, then keep it just slightly. If you push too fast, you can't stack up the waves properly. You want to stack up two or three waves if possible. Slow pushing counters melee champions because a lot of them don't have the clear to thin the wave out. And if they try to fight you inside of a big wave, your minions will win the fight for you. Also, slow pushing gives you level advantages that can lead to kills very easily. In low elo, I win lane in the first three levels just using a level 2 or 3 power spike 90% of the time. And in low elo, even if they do have the wave clear, they're not going to use it to thin the wave since they are in full autopilot. The only champion where you might have to be careful slow pushing against is Irelia. If the big wave you create has a lot of low health minions in it, she might use them all to heal and then she could kill you, so just pay attention to that. But like the trick before, this one also doesn't just apply to the first three waves, and we'll get more into that soon. Anyways, getting back into it, I'm collecting my first GCS and auto Yasuo wants to pop his passive shield. There's no point in using Q on him and wasting mana when his passive will eat the damage, and this applies to any champion with a shield like Diana. Then, after I kill one range minion, I'm using trick 1 again, looking for damage on him before the next wave gets here. You can see where the next wave is by just looking at your own wave coming. The enemy wave will be in the same spot. So I hit him with my Q in both forms and proc electrocute, then back away as the next wave arrives. Then, after I run back into my own wave, I turn human form and auto him one more time since I won't draw minion aggro from him. That brings us to trick 3. If the enemy melee is ever past this line, you should be auto attacking them. And that's because the ranged minions won't aggro you there. You can see right after, I auto him and it draws melee minion aggro, but I can just kite them around until they drop off. The ranged ones are the ones that will actually damage you. Anyways, I know I'm one minion from level 2, so I walk towards Yasuo to get in position to go in. I hit level 2, level up my E, hit him with the cocoon and go in, but I didn't have electrocute, so it wasn't much damage since his passive was up. I could have played it better though. But either way, the important part that you want to take away from this is how when I was about to hit 2, I moved into position to get ready to punish. After that, I want to collect my last hits as I wait for the next wave to arrive. As the wave walks into the tower, see how I auto Yasuo once before the ranged minions are here? Trick 1 being used again. All of these small moments of harass will add up quickly. Now I have to back up a little bit and focus on hitting level 3 since I should hit it first. But I still make sure to auto attack Yasuo if he goes past that line, like we talked about. I see him dashing in to fight me here, so I make sure to auto him once as he dashes in to pop his passive shield. Now watch how much damage he takes just from my minions and one auto attack from me. That was a ton of damage and it was with him having his passive shield to negate some of it. This is what I mean by slow pushing can win the lane for you. Your minions do so much damage when they are stacked up like this and low elo players don't respect it a lot of the time. But now I'm back to collecting some CS and focusing on hitting level 3, especially since some of my minions ran into tower range which let him hit level 3 a little bit faster than he should have. After that, I have to play a little more cautious since all of my wave is dead. But the slow push served its purpose. Level 3 is when Yasuo actually has some decent kill pressure versus me. But level 3 for any melee champion is a big spike and it's often when they have kill pressure in any matchup, especially versus ranged. But he's already at 40% health with no potions, so he doesn't have enough health to all in before I kill him. So I auto him once to pop his shield. If he tries to all in, I would just kill him. But now I have to back up until the waves meet again. Once they do, Yasuo starts dashing in because his jungler is here to gank, but because he was so low, I just quickly burst with ignite and start running down away from the Olaf. I wait for Olaf to get close to me in the brush and then I rappel to the wave, then run away to my tower to safety. Now the wave is in a perfect spot for me to reset, since it will just barely hit my tower when I get back, since it's slow pushing to me. You want to take recalls like this if you don't have the wave clear to clear the wave before the enemy mid will get back. If you try, you might end up dying, or it will get frozen and you'll lose a ton of experience. When I get back to lane, I don't have much kill pressure since my ignite is down, and that brings us to trick 4. Play around your ignite. We all know how much outplay potential and built-in healing these champions have, and ignite makes it much easier to handle. 
so I just slow push the waves in like before and crash on the tower. When it's on the tower, I just look for some harass and poke from range. I'm not looking for an all in kill at this point, as his health is too high without ignite, he could easily outplay it or just barely survive and it wouldn't be worth it. Basically, high risk, high reward. We want to take a low risk, high reward plays. Once the wave is cleared, I back up since I don't have any minions to defend me. Now, I don't want to freeze here because that will give him the minion advantage so he can actually fight me. Instead, I'm going to thin the wave to be even. This will make it slowly push back to him because of the even minion rule. The even minion rule is simple. If the wave is even, whichever side of the lane it's on, it will push the opposite way. So because it's closer to my side, it will slow push to him. But because I'm slow pushing and ignite is coming up in 30 seconds, I can look for a dive using my ignite as the wave crashes, which will snowball the lane as hard as possible. This is the most optimal snowball strategy, and it's going to use all three tricks we already talked about together. If I killed Yasuo now, I would still have to push the wave and crash it to deny the CS, and he would make it back to lane to catch most of it. If I freeze and kill him, I wouldn't be able to crash fast just like before, and I wouldn't get any tower plates if I kept it frozen. So by slow pushing and diving, I deny all the CS, get the kill, and I can get tower plates. So I thin out the wave to get it to start slow pushing. Then before the next wave arrives, I look for a chance to poke Yasuo here, and since he doesn't walk up, he's getting zoned off CS. It's just a win-win situation for me. He backs up pretty far now, so I continue to grab my CS and clear the wave. All right, I need to make sure to go for this dive as soon as possible, because if he hits level six, he can actually turn the dive around and kill me. So I'm walking up with my wave into the tower, and as I'm doing that, I see this low health minion that he might go for. So I throw my cocoon as he walks up to use Q on it and it lands. Then I just ignite and all in, get the kill, and repel to drop tower aggro. Now look at my experience. The gold isn't even the important part. I'm going to hit level 7 from this wave and he's still level 5. And the wave is going to slowly push back to me. The lane is completely over at this point. Alright guys, so you now have 4 tricks to deal with these melee champions added to your arsenal. If used properly, all of these obnoxious champions will be much easier to deal with in lane. But that's going to bring us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.